Hi, I'm Tesla from Brazil. Until recently, just your average girl. Going to school, having a pretty good life. Until the dream started. I was born with a really strange birthmark on my neck. And from childhood, I was taught to feel shame about it. My parents, who are carpenters, made sure I covered it with neck scarves or turtlenecks whenever I left the house. I've picked out your outfit for today, love. Ah, another turtleneck? It's summer, mom. The weather is hot. Can I wear a tank top? No, dear. We can't have the mock on your neck show. But why? Look at it, dear. It's so ugly, don't you think? People will run from you if they see it. We are the only ones who love you with the mock. No one else will. Thanks to them, I was always self-conscious when I was outside. I didn't want to make friends so no one could get close enough to see my mark. The only time I threw caution to the wind was when I was close to water. No matter where we were, if I saw a body of water, be it a bathtub or the Atlantic Ocean, if it was big enough for me, in seconds I would be swimming in it. I just couldn't resist the pull of water. When I turned 10, mom and dad took me to a fancy dinner to celebrate their anniversary, and while they were eating, I crept away from the table and climbed into the giant aquarium. My parents didn't even notice. I was having so much fun, until some bratty kid sold me out. Mom, look, a real mermaid. Tesla! In seconds, the security pulled me out. My parents rushed me home. They told me I ruined their anniversary. Tesla, this is becoming too much. Were you a fish or something in your former life? I don't know about being a fish, but I want to be the most popular swimmer in the world. Better than Kate Ledecky. How about you become a carpenter, like us, and give up this fantasy? Uh-uh. I was really strong-headed, so eventually, my parents had no choice but to support my dreams. They got me an inflatable pool that I could do all sorts of strokes in, and even let me participate in local swimming competitions. But when I turned 13, something happened that turned my love for water into a phobia for it. We traveled to Dad's rural hometown for Christmas, and as a treat, Dad took me to their local lake. Stay close, Tesla. Swim in the shallow side. <laughs> the shallow side is for amateurs, Dad. I ignored Dad's instruction and dove right into the deep side. I thought I was such a great swimmer, but I was the amateur that day. Suddenly, my legs cramped and I couldn't move. Help! Somebody! No one seemed to hear me, and the water was pulling me under quickly. That's when it happened. I couldn't tell if it was a vision or a memory, but the lake suddenly became a stormy ocean, and I saw a ship being carried away by strong waves, and a woman was shouting from the ship. There was something about her. Carla! I closed my eyes and saw a woman with sandy brown hair just like mine. Carla! Tesla! When I opened my eyes again, I was on the beach with Dad and several people around me. Tesla, oh thank God, I thought I lost you. That experience changed my life. Every night after then, the vision I had seen would always replay in my head at night. It got so bad that the sight of anything related to swimming, like my swim trunks, made me jump. Even bathing became scary. My head was filled with questions. Who was Carla? And why did the ship I saw have the same mark on my neck? What was going on with me? I needed answers, and my parents seemed like the best place to start. I approached them one day in our backyard. Mom, Dad, have I ever been on a ship before? To my surprise, they got the strangest looks. Mom even looked like she wanted to faint. Uh, of course not. Why do you ask? Ever since I nearly drowned, I've been having these strange dreams. There's a ship, and someone's screaming a name. Um, <clears throat> it must be the shock from your experience, love. Or it could be your body's way of overcoming your obsession with swimming. Go back inside, and I'll make you a nice lunch. What they said made sense to me back then. I just wanted the visions to stop. They kept playing over and over like a broken record. I decided to abandon my swimming career and began to learn my parents' business. Every day after school, I dove into how to cure wood, cut, paint, sand. I felt like I was really becoming a carpenter. Keep your wrist like this, so you get just the perfect arch. Like this? Great. You're a natural at this, Tesla. Although learning my parents' trade gradually made those horrible flashes in my head stop, it was also increasingly dull. Since I was too scared to swim again, I tried to force myself to be happy. I should have known it would never work. A year later, my parents hit the jackpot in their career and transferred me to an elite school. As usual, I stayed away from everyone. Please don't sit at my table. Please don't sit at my table. But there was one person who didn't get the hint. So, Tesla, why do you always cover your neck? Do you have, like, a secret vampire bite? For the hundredth time, no. Why do you like to be alone? Do you smell bad? Don't smell bad to me. 
Her name was Adriana, and on the swim team, ever since I defended her from some mean jerks picking on her for being here on a scholarship, she became like my second shadow. A very noisy shadow. When I whined to mom about Adriana's clinginess, she's like a five-year-old that ate too much sugar. Just make sure she doesn't get too close. Remember, never trust anyone. I was determined to do just that, but Adriana did something really sweet that broke my shell. It was raining after school one day, and I was so afraid of having my nightmares come back, I refused to leave. I couldn't stay. I couldn't go home. I didn't know what to do. That was when Adriana appeared and gave me her umbrella. Don't. Don't you need it? Looks like you need it more than me. Don't worry. It's been a while since I played in the rain. Come on! It's fun! She gave up her umbrella for my sake. From that day forward, she was no longer clingy Adriana, but my knight in shining armor. We became close friends after that. And one day, I even invited her to my house. That was a big mistake. Whoa, your house is so big. Thanks, but don't touch anything. As if she was deaf, she picked up something that tugged at my heart. Hey, a swimming medal for you? You're a swimmer? I used to be. Whoa! No wonder I was drawn to you from our first meeting. We have kindred spirit. Why did you stop? I told Adriana everything about the dreams that made me hate being in the water, and she was so sympathetic. But you miss swimming, right? It used to make you very happy. The truth is, yes, a lot. Well, instead of running from your fears, why don't you face them? How? I can't fight a nightmare. No. But you can fight the fear of water by getting into water. That's crazy. Trust me, expose yourself to what makes you most afraid and you won't be afraid of it anymore. At that moment, my parents chose to come in and boy, did they look like wild bulls. You brought someone into this house? What part of trust no one did you not understand? And there's no way you're going back to swimming. Trust me, all those nightmares would just come back full force. You... Leave our house this moment. Before I could think, I grabbed Adriana's hand. Don't talk to Adriana like that. She's harmless. Adriana, huh? Isn't she the girl you said is like a five-year-old that ate too much sugar? I wanted the ground to open and swallow me when mom said that. And Adriana turned to me with tears in her eyes. You said that about me? Adriana, I have to go now. My parents and I had a big fight after Adriana left. To make things worse, Adriana wouldn't pick up my call so I could explain and apologize to her. But I refused to give up. It was days later when I got an opportunity to talk to her. The next day, our school went for a fun tour in a rural village. While we were crossing the bridge, I tried to talk to Adriana again. Adriana, I'm sorry about my parents. Can we go back and- Don't talk to me. She turned away before I could finish, and I was so annoyed. Adriana, if you just listen- Adriana! I tried to catch her, but it was too late. We all looked helplessly as she entered the freezing water. We all panicked, but no one was willing to jump in and save her. Our tour guides were busy calling rescue divers to come and save her. I knew it might be too late by the time the divers would come. So I stood on the bridge, took a deep breath, and tried not to freak out. My desire to save Adriana outweighed my phobia. Besides, it was my fault she was in there. She was my responsibility. The current was so strong, and I wanted to puke with how scared I was. But for Adriana's sake, I fought hard and caught her just in time to get us to safety. Adriana's eyes were wide open when I got to the beach, and she had a huge smirk on her face. Gotcha! Now everyone knows we have a mermaid on land! Adriana! You're... Wait, <laughs> this was a deliberate act? Just wanted to know if I should really forgive you or not. <gasps> You're crazy! That was so risky! Adriana, what I said to my mom then was way before we became friends. Hey, it's cool. You jumped in after me. Of course I forgive you. So, how did it feel to be back in the water? I couldn't even remember if I was in water or flying in air. All that mattered was saving you. That day, everyone expressed amazement at my skill and bravery. Some had even taken videos of the incident and posted it online. When the rescue divers finally arrived, you can't imagine how happy I was to see Matt Makison, a popular swimmer, and now swim coach amongst them. He walked up to me. I've already watched your video. You were like a freaking dolphin in there. Ever considered swimming for the Olympics? Actually, that used to be my dream. It should be your reality. You're good. I'm coaching for the Olympics now. You could easily beat Kate Ledecky. Would you like to be part of it? Seeing Adriana and Matt express strong confidence in me was all I needed to reignite my passion for swimming. And so with all my heart, I said, Yes, I would like that. 
Adriana and I got a ride home, and I was so happy with how everything turned out that I forgot something very important. <laughs> Whoa! You're showing your neck for the first time! Is that a moon mark? My jacket was still off, and now everyone had seen my neck! Don't look! It's ugly! Are you kidding me? The mark is like a work of art! Really? Are you blind? Look at it! I looked at the mark in the window, and for the first time, I didn't feel disgust. Adriana was right. It wasn't ugly. It was beautiful. For the first time in my life, I was no longer ashamed. Are you okay? I am now. Thanks to you. When I got home, my parents weren't back yet. They had gone on a business trip. I was not relishing their drama about my birthmark being outed. However, nothing in the world could prepare me for the shock that came the next day. I thought maybe my parents had forgotten their keys. But nope. A grinning Adriana was at the door, with dozens of reporters in wait. Good morning, Tesla! These news people asked me to show them the mermaid in human form that saved my life, aka you! I barely had time to react as the reporters started asking me a million questions at a go. And just then, my parents showed up! What's going on here? How dare you people film our daughter! It's okay! Your daughter's a hero! Adriana showed my parents the video of me saving her life, but instead of congratulating me on my bravery and skills, they shoved me inside and went off on me. What kind of child are you? Not only did you get into water, you uncovered your neck for the whole world to see! Now we have to leave here before everyone starts treating you badly for it! Are you for real? I was saving my friend's life! And you know what? My mark is a part of me, and I refuse to be ashamed of it anymore! Thanks to your carelessness, that dream will come to haunt you for the rest of your life. People will make fun of you. Your life will be a nightmare now. I'm not afraid of nightmares anymore. Next week, I will be joining a swim team. I won't let it or you two stop me from doing what I love. This ends now. We're leaving. My parents were acting like they had lost some nuts, and I was fuming with anger at them. Ah! Ah! Where are you taking me? Told you, we're leaving now. Through the backyard? Officially, my parents had lost their minds. But just as we got out the backyard, we were met with the unexpected. The police had our house surrounded. Reporters had moved from the front to the back and were capturing the whole thing. I was in shock. On your knees now, hands in the air, let the captive go. I thought, what captive? Was there someone else in the house? And then I saw her, the woman from my dreams. To my shock, mom and dad went down on their knees like common criminals. It turns out that the captive was me. My dream lady hugged me with tears in her eyes. My Carla, it's really you. Um, my name is Tesla, but I think I know you. Your name is Carla. I gave it to you when you were born. These thieves are not your parents. I am your real mom. Twelve years ago, when you were just three years old, we were traveling by ship. When we got hit by a storm, you were only three and got carried away by the waves. I did my best to find you, but these criminals did their best to hide you. The woman's story made my head spin, and at the same time, something told me it was nothing but the truth. So the dream I used to have was actually a memory? No, that… that, that can't be. Mom, Dad, she's lying, right? She's right, Tesla. For ten years, your mother and I had no child. One day, we went for a picnic beside the river in my hometown and found you by the beach. You had no memory of your past, so we took you as Heaven's gift to us and raised you. Heaven's gift to you? You have no idea how much pain you caused me! Wait, this mark on my neck? I have it too. Every royalty in our tribe has it. Royalty? So this is why you made me hide it, so I wouldn't be recognized and found by her! Everything's a lie, even my name! My feelings ranged from shock to disbelief and mostly anger at my parents. Scratch that, fake parents, selfishness. All these years, you told me I shouldn't trust anyone when you're the ones who shouldn't be trusted! Take them away, officers! It broke my heart to see the people I had known as my parents taken away, but they had to face the consequences for their actions. Days later, I was on my way home with my real mom. I had so many questions. Just ask me already. So we live on an island? Is that why I can swim so well? Let's just say we are all very, very good swimmers. Are my tribe people like very modern or stuck in the Stone Age? <laughs> oh, Carla, do I look like someone from the Stone Age to you? You said this moon mark is for royalty. All royals in our tribe have that mark. So am I like a princess or something? 
There's a lot to learn, Carla. You will learn everything in due time. But know this, you are the queen of my heart. Life after that day was just amazing. Just a year later, I held multiple world records, knocking Kate Ledecky off her pedestal in every category. And I was just getting started. But swimming was just a part of my new amazing life. Guys, don't let any so-called flaws make you feel less. Find a way to rock those so-called flaws. Don't let anyone tell you lies or define you because each and every one of you is a royal. You're all queens and kings. And if you're lucky enough, try to be and make friends like my dear Adriana over here. A friend that pushes you to be the best you can be and stands by you through thick and thin. Life is to live. Don't wait another day. Go grab your destiny and never let go.